Hi, and welcome to FreshMind.com. My name is Eric, and we are going to model a DVD drawer. Now, I'm not going to use a reference. I'm just, uh, I've got a DVD drawer here beside me that I'm just going to model. So, I apologize for you not being able to see any kind of reference. I like to do that a lot. Um, it adds a little bit of creativity, and I don't have to worry about everything being so perfect. Now, if I was to model something, say, more like a, uh, a person or a character, I would definitely want to use reference just so I can get the uh, lightness looking as much as possible to the references. Alright, I'm going to start off by just creating a box, just creating it in the general shape of this uh, DVD drawer. Kind of zoom in. I'm going to scale this up so I don't have to worry about when I zoom in really close. Go and hide my grid. Now I'm just going to take my time modeling this and just try to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to go to edge select mode. I'm going to select all of these edges. These are kind of really rounded off, so I'm just going to go to the edit mesh menu and do a bevel. Now this is all going to be really easy stuff, um, but hopefully you'll get something out of it, especially if you're a beginner using Maya. I'm going to go over here to channel box. Under the input nodes, you'll see a poly bevel. You'll see offset and segments. I'm going to change the segments to two. That helps keep everything in quads, and it also adds a little more um, detail so that we get a better smooth. Yeah, after um, we finish modeling this, I'm going to do a smooth on it so that it'll look really nice. Okay, I'm going to increase the offset just a little bit, and what I'm doing is I'm just going to click on the word offset, and now I can middle mouse drag left and right on my in my view panel to change that value in real time. So as I change back and forth, and you can see it kind of like has like a step, so it changes like 0.1 every time. Um, we can adjust that by going up here at the top of our channel box. You'll see a little button that's got a picture of our manipulator handle. If I click that two times, the one next to it kind of highlights, and now we can click it and change it to where it just has like a little line, just a little black line inside of a circle. And now I'm going to go back to the button to the left and put that back the way it was just by clicking on it one time. All right, now it it does uh, it changes by 0 0.01 every time instead of 0.1. So a little bit more control, and I'm just going to give it kind of like a, a nice rounded look like that. I'm going to select all the, I'm going to go back to, what I'm doing is just right clicking on the object and choosing edge. I'm going to select all the edges. I'm going to press and hold down the control button and marquee drag around the same area that I, I selected earlier just to deselect all those edges. Oh, you know what? Let's delete these edges here. These were created from our bevel. I'm just going to hit the delete button. Let's try that again. I'm going to select all the all the edges. I'm going to press and hold down the control button. Marquee drag around um, this top right part of our geometry. It deselects all those edges. So now with all these edges selected, I'm going to do another bevel. So edit mesh bevel. And actually that's not too bad there. I think I'm going to make that a little smaller. So let's change our segments to two. Change the offset, maybe something a little bit smaller, maybe something kind of like that. All right, I'm going to go into a side view here. All right, this DVD drawer has like a kind of a, a groove that goes across the top. It comes down the side and it kind of does a turn and then it goes around the back. So let's kind of create that. Shift, right click, I'm going to use the Cut Faces tool. I'm just going to make a cut, say about right there. And I'm also going to make a couple other cuts. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of divisions right in this big area. So maybe one about right there. That's where the groove goes. And I'm just going to add one more division there. Actually, maybe right there. All right. Right click, go to vertex select mode. I'm going to select these vertices here, pull that over. That's going to create that curve for our groove right there. So nothing too difficult so far, some pretty easy stuff. It's just a matter of looking at it. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can model different things. So the way I'm doing it, if you've got a preferred method, feel free to use your own creativity when you're modeling. Now just to get a little more definition in this bend, I'm going to add another division right there. So I'm just going to shift, right click, cut faces tool, and maybe, I don't want to put it halfway, I'm going to go a little bit less than halfway, just because I know when I move the vertices over right there, it kind of keeps that distance the same. 
All right, so now that we've got our curve a little bit better defined, that should work out pretty nicely. Let's go ahead and do a smooth preview to see what we have. I'm just going to press number three on my keyboard. All right, there's what we have so far, so not too bad. All right, I'm going to use the insert, uh, we're insert an edge loop. Shift, right click, insert edge loop tool, options box. I'm just going to click this reset button. And I'm just going to click on one of these edges and drag it pretty close to that other one. So maybe something about like that. Now it's probably a little too big of a space there, but this will allow you to be able to see what's going on a little better. I think if I got this too close together, it might be a little bit more difficult to follow along. All right, let's go back to a side view. Now I'm still in the the uh, the tools, so I'm just going to press the letter Q or the letter W, just something to get out of that tool. Now if we look over here, we've got this. Let me switch to face select mode. We've got this size face going through here, but then right here is kind of squished together. So all I'm going to do is just grab some vertices and just kind of resituate these. Maybe I'll pull this one up. move these over and actually the ones coming down here uh, don't really matter because we're trying to get the same size all the way across the back not really down all right shift right click insert another edge loop so down here that way we can kind of follow along this groove going around to the back I press the letter W to get out of that tool all right so far so good we've got some edges that I don't really want since we don't need both these edges down here or both these edges on this side, let's go ahead and get get rid of one of those. And the way I'm going to do it is shift, right click, split polygon tool. I'm just going to cut this across right there and on the other side. Now if you want, you can delete half your model and just work on one half. And then once you get that half the way you want it, you can duplicate it and then merge them together. But since this is pretty simple stuff, I'm just going to go ahead and just work on both sides. All right, uh, just right clicking, selecting edge. Oh, try it again, edge. And it doesn't seem to be changing. Oh, there it is. All right, I'm gonna double click on this edge here, or actually this one up here. And I'm gonna sh hold the shift button down and double click this edge. And it selects it all the way around. I'm gonna go to edit mesh delete edge vertex. Now I don't want to just hit the delete button because it will leave some vertices behind so I want to use this delete edge vertex option feature. So when I click that it gets rid of the edges but it also gets rid of all the vertices that were connected on those edges. Alright let's go ahead and tweak this again a little bit so I'm going to go right click vertex there we go just to get all that about the same all right, so that's done. The only thing we have left to do now for this groove is just to create the groove. I'm going to select the face, press and hold down the shift button, and now I'm going to double click a face right next to it. And it selects it all the way around. So if I go to a perspective view, let's go to a wireframe, you can see how it's selected all the way around. Again, all I did was selected a face, press and held down the shift button, and double clicked a face next to it, and it selects it all the way around. Alright, with well, all those selected, let me go back to smooth or shaded mode. I'm going to go to the edit mesh. I'll make sure my keep faces together is turned on and I'm going to click on extrude. I'm going to look for the blue arrow or the blue handle rather. I'm going to push it in just a little bit. I'm going to press the letter G on my keyboard to repeat the last command or you can just go up and do your uh, extrude again push it down a little further letter G to repeat the last command which was our extrude look for the blue arrow and push it in just a little bit more alright object mode let's do a smooth preview by hitting the number three on my keyboard let's see what we have alright so now we have a our groove 
Now it's not holding the shape very good right there, so we'll need to fix that. And also, if you you can see this little weird shading going on, that's because the edges are being really pulled and stretched. So you can see this edge right here. If I highlight this edge, if I can get it, there we go. All right, I'm gonna hide that now. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go back to a non-smooth version, and this edge is really way over here. So you can see where that edge is. It's just being pulled, so we want to keep that from pulling away so much. And what we're going to do that is I'm going to go back to object mode. Let's go into side view. Shift, right click, insert edge loop tool. And I'm just going to insert edge loop kind of on this side to hold, to hold that. And I'll put one on the other side as well, about the same distance. So I got the same distance right there on both sides. And then I'm going to go to the vertice select mode. And I'm going to adjust it all the way up. So let's see. I'm looking at the DVD drawer right beside me. And on this top, this top groove is pretty close to the front. So what I want to do is, I think up here on the top, I'm going to pull these inward to where it's about the same, about the same on both sides of our, our groove. Might even pull that up like that just so it's kind of following around there. If you want to keep these lines straight, you can. And I'm going to leave those, oh, we can pull those in too. Let's see. We'll see what that's going to look like. All right, so this will be a little better, but I'm still going to add some more edge loops, but I just want to show you the difference that it will make. You can see how that shading is pretty much gone now, that weird looking shading. All right, let's go back. And I'm actually going to, because if we look at the smooth version, we're getting kind of a, almost like an angle going on right there. It almost, it's not really rounded as much. So I am going to go back in here. Let's go ahead and add our edge loops this way first, just to see what we're getting here. Insert edge loops. I'm just going to put a couple of edge loops in between this groove and this back edge. So maybe one about right there, and one about right there. Alright, so this still kind of has like an angle to it, so let's go ahead and fix that. And the way I'm going to do it is I think... Maybe spread this out a little bit more and pull this out a little bit more. That way that's allowed to curve a little uh, better. Because if we put it really tight, then it's got those edges. It's not averaging out as much. So if we spread that out a little more, it's going to average that bend a lot, a lot better. So I'm just going to spread those out. Might even spread these out here. All right, let's see what we got now. So now you can see that's a lot better now. That holds that curve a lot better. So that's it. So we've got a nice uh, groove going on there. Comes down across the top, down the side, turns, and goes all the way around the back. All right, next, let's give this thing a little bit more shape. I'm going to select these back vertices here. I'm going to go up to the animation menu set, and what I want to do is I want to, I kind of want to make this kind of a curve, curvature, instead of so flat on the back. So I'm going to use a deformer, create deformers, lattice. I'm just going to keep it the default. So you look at here my channel box under the shape nodes, you can see the lattice shape, and it's got some divisions there. I'm just going to just leave everything default. I'm going to right click in my view panel and select lattice point. I'm just going to start selecting some of these and just giving this a little bit more curvature shape. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing to the front, but to get rid of that lattice, you can just select your object, edit, delete by type, history, and it gets rid of your lattice. I'll do the same thing to the front. Go to vert vertex select mode. I'm gonna select all these front vertices. Create deformers, lattice. Same thing, I'm just gonna leave it default. I'm going to right click in the view panel and select lattice point. 
and now I can just start dragging these how I want them and the front's a lot more sloped than the back is All right, something about like that, I believe. And this whole thing is a little bit too long. So I'm going to go back to edit, delete by type history. And I'm just going to go ahead and just shrink this a little bit. There we go. Do a smooth preview. All right, there is our DVD drawer. It's looking pretty good. All right, the front could use a little more shaping. So I'm going to go to a front view. Create Deformers, Lattice. Right click, Lattice Point. Same thing, I'm just going to use all the default settings. And actually, I think that's going to do it right there. Edit, Delete by Type, History. Alright, let's go ahead and save this. I didn't really set up a project, but let's go ahead and do that. File, whoops file, down to project, over to new, and I'm going to call this DVD drawer. I'm going to put this on my desktop. All right, default names for all these subfolders, so I'm going to click this button down here at the bottom, click accept. All right, file, save scene as. I'm going to call this DVD drawer underscore one. All right, so this is now on my desktop, so here's the DVD drawer folder, there's a subfolders with default names, and inside our scenes folder is our file that we saved, DVD drawer 1.